Lord Jesus, thank you that you died to give us life, and thank you, Lord, that you overcame the grave. And Lord, this message for us is a reminder of your resurrection. Lord. So as we uh, as we uh, look forward to the resurrection and we experience uh, the resurrection in all its glory, I pray, Lord, that um, I pray, Lord, that uh, we'll be ready, uh, Lord, to recognize that we should just celebrate the resurrection on Easter Sunday Lord, but it's something that we should do all the time all the time remember it uh, Lord because uh, there's so much good uh, to come out of it uh, Lord so um, yes we're thankful Lord for who you are we praise you uh, for who you are in Jesus name Amen would you mind just closing that door Keith I'm sure there's so much enjoyment out there and uh we just don't want anything to distract us from what we've got to hear today. And that way they're free to make any noise and there's no and that and that way we can all we're all good, we're all zoomed in. There we go. Praise be to God. Amen. So he is risen. So we celebrate Christ the Saviour today. And today it's well, I mean we sort of begun uh, this week is the conclusion. Easter to me, Easter is Depends who you talk to. In some traditions, it's a 40-day celebration. It starts with Lent uh, in some traditions. But in a lot of more mainstream traditions, to me at least, I see it as a week celebration. I see Easter as. I had a birthday during the week, so it really was a week celebration for me, it was. Uh, but for people that are not, who did have a birthday this week, uh, it really is, it should be considered a week celebration. Because they had to begin with Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday was the beginning of the Holy Week, it was. And I, sh and I shared last week um, about the task he was on, the journey he was on, the narrow road that he was on uh, towards his purpose. And now he's at the end of the week. It's a comp he's finished the task, and that is he resurrected from the grave. We've now come to Sunday now. And this is all about the finished work, the finished work of Christ in our life. It's about accomplishing the task. Many of us are on our journey towards eternity. And there's going to come a point where we're going to come to a point where we too have finished the task at our end. And, and, what, and what does the finished work of Christ in our life look like? Today is, I know the world calls it Easter Sunday, but it's really Resurrection Sunday. That's really what today is all about. And we heard about the narrow road. And it's the difficult road that we must all take on our way to the cross. We must go through that period of death. And now, thanks to the resurrection, we now have an invitation to enjoy the resurrected Saviour. It's, it's an invitation to not just celebrate, worship the Saviour, but to enjoy the Saviour. Now, when you celebrate things, you're enjoying things. You know, it doesn't matter what it might be. It might be a, a difficult task you accomplished. I've got a friend that's, uh, who spent two years uh, landscaping his backyard. He has. He spent, he's, um, he's in his 70s, I might add. That's a mighty achievement. He's done this. He had no backyard, and now he's got this beautiful backyard. He, does. he spent two years uh, putting that all together. And he says, after two years, I can now celebrate and enjoy my backyard uh, that I've put together. And all of us are on a similar kind of journey where we can, where we've been working and now we celebrate and now we enjoy it. And that's what, that's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. It's about enjoying the resurrected Saviour. As Christians, we don't grieve Good Friday. It felt strange, but on Friday, I was saying Happy Good Friday to everyone. That's a strange thing to say, but it's true. We don't grieve Good Friday. It is a Good Friday. It's called Good Friday for a reason. It is. And we don't grieve Good Friday like those who have no hope. Those that had no hope grieved Good Friday. But we don't because he lives. We can see the story from the other side. We know that he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And because he lives... All fear is gone. I was I was showing us a documentary to uh, one of my friends up north the other week, and if you're someone that doesn't know the final story, you would get depressed. 
if you saw it, talks about what's happening in the world, etc., and why things are the way they are. You know, there's a lot of corruption in the world, you can't hide from it. And there's a lot of, uh, and there's a lot, and, and power is, and power is in the hands of only a few. And not, and they don't all have the best of intentions. And, and, sh and so, I showed, so I showed this documentary, and she got a bit depressed. You know, she says, I worry about the world my grandchildren will enter. And I said to her, you don't have to worry about the world your grandchildren will enter because of Jesus, because of the beautiful story of the fact that we know God's word, we know the scriptures, and we know that our resurrection is soon coming. And what we can see in this world is about to come to an end. Pray for them, just pray, and know that the Lord is in control. Yes, there's a lot of bad things happening right now, but the Lord is in control. And we know for certain that the resurrection is coming. Not just for Jesus, but for us. All of us are going to experience a resurrection at some point. So today we appreciate the story of the resurrection. And, I, and, and my prayer is that we appreciate the story of the resurrection in new and deeper ways. There are four truths I want us to take out of this story of the resurrection. The main one being that we don't live it to one day a year. We don't mention the story of the resurrection for just one day. Not just for one day, but something that we recognise and remember and celebrate, I think, as often as we can. As often as we can, we should do this. Because there is so much good to come out of it. Jesus is risen. He is alive. He's not just alive on Sunday, but he's alive right now. And every day that you have lived, and every day that you are ever going to live, so let's celebrate. He has risen and he is with us all the time. And I hope we don't move too quickly through all this stuff. I mean, life goes very fast. We tend to move quick through things. Like Easter, it's going to be over in a flash. Christmas was the same. Christmas was, what are we in now? We're in March. It was just over three months ago, Christmas. And, that, and, that did, and look, the weather's still warm. It didn't feel like that long ago at all. Uh, to me Christmas, we've moved through that and now we're at Easter now and then that's going to move fast and then three months later we're going to get to June, July and it's going to be cold again you know, and, uh, and we're going to think wow, it was Easter three months ago, wow you know, things will just move through so quickly and there are four wonderful truths we should ponder about Christ's resurrection, he is alive which means there are other precious realities as our living Lord. And the number one, have I, uh, whoa, did, you, did you click too fast, Matthew? Can you click through the first, can you go to the first slide, please? It's the beginning of our resurrection. It is the beginning of our resurrection. That is the precious reality we have to realise when we have a resurrected Saviour. It's the beginning of our resurrection. Jesus not only resurrected from the dead, he, 40 days after his resurrection, he ascended into heaven. And if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. I haven't got it on the screen, but I've got the, the little uh, reference point there. And, it's, and the Apostle Paul was writing uh, to the Thessalonian church. And he says this about what is to come. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with resurrection, sorry, bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So that's talking about, that's basically a polite way of saying those who have died, those who have passed on, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So it's our own resurrection. Many of us have got loved ones that are perhaps buried in the ground, but it says here that they too will be 
resurrected. The dead in Christ will rise first. Because Jesus resurrected, we too will one day be buried in the ground and we too will rise again. We will rise again. We will. Jesus' resurrection begins our ascent into glory. Jesus' resurrection was the start of our ascent into glory. And it's a beautiful representation of him being ascending into heaven of what will happen with us. We too will ascend into heaven. The next slide. It's the beginning. The next slide. It's the beginning of our reign with Christ. So Christ was resurrected to reign. He was resurrected to reign, but he also began our co-reign with Christ. There are loads of scriptures. We've got Hebrews 1 verse 6, Hebrews 2 verse 5, Romans 8 verse 17, and let's not forget Matthew 28 verse 18, which I'm going to share with you all a little bit later. But Romans 1 verse 6 says, And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Hebrews 2 verse 5, For it was not to angels that God subjected to the world to come, for which we are speaking. He is subjected to the world which is to come for that which we are all speaking. So we reign with him because we are his co heirs Of course, let's not forget Matthew 28 verse 18. Jesus said, all authority under heaven and earth has been given to me. Now he has been resurrected. All authority in heaven and earth so he's been resurrected to reign. But there's also this beautiful truth that Paul points to in the Romans. The risen Christ, he reigns in us. He reigns in our hearts and he reigns in us. But that means if he reigns in us, that means we are his co-heirs. That means because he is reigning in us. And because he's reigning in us, that makes us co-heirs. Paul told the Romans in Chapter 8, verse 17. Now, if we are children, so remember, we are now children of the living God. I believe it was in John chapter 1 where he says, um, those who accepted him uh, by faith earned the right to become children of God. So by faith, when we accept Jesus by faith, we have earned the right to be called children of God. And it says, now, now Paul told the Romans, now if we are children of then that means that we are also heirs. So remember, Paul was talking to uh, well, he was talking to a, 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 the Romans, he was, and they all believed in this uh, concept of um, inherited wealth. So wealth was inherited. Think back to the parable of the prodigal son. Um, you know, the prodigal son wanted his inheritance before his father had died never happens. You do not ask for your father's inheritance but while he's alive. You might as well say Father, I wish you were dead, now give me your money. That's basically what he told him. He said. And naturally the father gave him what he was due because, because he was entitled to that as his heir. He was. We are also entitled to the father's wealth because we are children of the living God which means we are heirs, heirs of God. And because we are heirs of God, that makes us co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. We're co-heirs with Christ. That means we share in his sufferings, but we also share in his glory. That means we do. So it means that if you, so this so this resurrection when we accept him by faith means that we now begin our co-inheritance. We co-reign with Christ. The resurrected reign Savior reigns. He reigns in us, and that means we too get a share in the glory. It really is the greatest treasure in the whole wide world. It's funny, I don't know. These songs, if, if the, these songs we used to sing when we were kids. I don't know if you remember many songs when you were kids that we used to sing. Like, I hadn't thought of this song for about 
when I go to school, well, primary school, this would have been, this would have been over 20 years ago. This would have been, I haven't thought about it for over 20 years, but I remember the songs. Isn't it funny how songs can stick in your head, especially when you're children? There's a song that we used to sing that used to go, the greatest treasure in the whole wide world is peace with God. And then we clap our hands. And it's true, because it is the greatest treasure in the whole wide world. It's peace of God. Because why? If we have peace with God, that means we become children of God. If we become children of God, that means we become heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. That's why it is the greatest treasure in the whole wide world. That means the resurrection is the greatest thing to ever happen in the whole wide world. Because it means we become heirs with Christ. We're also heirs, we also are heirs in his suffering, I might add. But it also means that we are heirs with Christ. It means that whatever, it means that whatever happens in this world, whatever the world is fearing, we don't fear it. Because we know that we have something greater in us that is still to come. We must not forget this next truth. Next slide. He was resurrected to rescue. He is, sorry, resurrected to rescue, I should point out. Now, Paul told the Corinthians, and Keith shared this a little earlier, that our faith is futile without the resurrection. He told the Corinthians, our faith is futile and we are still in our sins without the resurrection. We studied this in Bible school, not school, study, it's not Bible school, Bible study uh, a couple, two or three weeks ago about 1 Corinthians 15, about the resurrection. The Corinthians, the Greeks, they thought, why would Jesus want to resurrect himself? This body is a prison for our soul. Why would he want to come back? And Paul's saying, there most certainly is a resurrection. Because without the resurrection, our faith is futile and we are still in our sins. You see, he had to pay the price for our sins. Because God is a God of justice, it means he has to punish evil, for it is due. All of us deserve to be punished for the sins that we have made, because God is consistent. And he is a God of justice. But Jesus paid the price. And because he paid the price, he died on the cross. But because he was the perfect lamb, because he was son of the living God, he conquered the keys to death and defeated death on the cross, and he resurrected. Which means the price is paid, and through faith, we will live and not die. The resurrection saves us. It gives us a faith. It gives us a hope, and it gives us a future. It saves our souls. Not only does it save our souls, it satisfies our souls. I love that. You see, not only are our souls saved, but we're also satisfied. You know, I, I watch a lot of movies, maybe too, much, too many movies I watch, and I look at these stories of people getting saved. You know, they might be kidnapped or hostages and they're saved. And I think, okay, they're saved. And they're probably relieved that they're saved, but the trauma would be there. The post-traumatic stress of having, a, of having something like being kidnapped, for example, would still be with you, even though you are saved. But you see, we don't have that post-traumatic stress. We are saved. Our soul is saved. And because we are saved, it means that our soul is satisfied. And not only is our soul satisfied, it means that we are healed. You see, sometimes when people get rescued from horrible things, or stuck in the bush or a shark attack, the trauma might still remain. But not us. We are healed. We are healed because Jesus paid the price on the cross. By his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53. We are healed now because he has saved our souls. And not only has he saved our souls, he satisfies our souls. And he saves our bodies. Our bodies are saved and will be resurrected into new bodies. And we need to have access to the cross to be saved. You see, we must go through the cross to be saved. And it applies to us 
all of us. And we're saved through the power of the cross and the power of his own spirit, which he pours out to us from heaven's throne. He's currently sitting there in heaven's throne and he pours out his spirit to us. It pours out a bit like the blood that was shed for us. His spirit pours out of him to us. You see, this wasn't a potential salvation. A potential salvation does not rescue. We need a full salvation. We don't need a semi-salvation. We can't just be half saved. This is why it's so important to not have any part of our body still in the world. I remember, I think it was, uh, I think it was, the, it was the Corinthians again. Oh, no, no, it was Revelation, sorry. It was the church of Laodicea that uh, the Lord gave, the, uh, gave John a message. Because you are lukewarm, I spat you back out. Lukewarm is, not, is neither hot nor cold. It's neither here nor there. And we can't afford a potential salvation. We can't afford a half salvation. We need to be covered with the blood of the Lamb. We need a full salvation where Jesus paid the price. Thus coming through, thus, thus he comes and gives us the instrument that is called faith, which unites us to him, to our risen Lord. However sufficient Christ's self-sacrifice might have been, we would have no access to it without his resurrection. Christ would, still, Christ would still be punished for our sins, but we wouldn't have the right to have access to it without the resurrection. He'd be dead without the resurrection. He would have been like a martyr. He would have been, but we'd have no access to his resurrection. And so without so his salvation, without his resurrection. And the whole point of that was, was that so we could be united to him. Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 17 to 18, this is what Jesus said. Jesus says, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Christ must be living, so the benefits of his work applies to us. Which brings me to my last slide before I close, and that is, he is resurrected to rejoice the heart. It's to rejoice the heart he was resurrected to. Jesus saves our soul, but he also satisfies our hearts. He is alive to know and to enjoy. You see, he's not just there for us to know him. He's there for us to also enjoy him. If Jesus was still dead, there would be no great salvation to enjoy if he was still you know, Christianity is the only religion in the world where their God is alive. They do. Alive and walked among us to be saved, but also to enjoy. No other religion has this. You know, you talk to Islam, you know, they follow the teachings of Muhammad. You know, Muhammad's not alive. Muhammad didn't die for anyone. He, we follow his teachings. Same with Buddhists. You know, Buddha's alive. He's been, you know, reincarnated. And we don't, I mean, I mean, he's not with us. You know, we follow his teachings, uh, they said. The Jews, they're still, they missed the boat. They missed the boat, unfortunately. They missed the boat. They did. The Messiah was there. The Messiah was there. He's, he's come. You missed him. He was there. He's still there. It's not too late. You can still accept him. It's not too late. He's there. He invites you to be here, to accept him. He does. You've still got time. You've still got time. But for us as Christians, he saves that we can know him, but also enjoy him. He is alive to know and enjoy. And at the centre of the Easter story is triumph. And it's not what he saves us from. It's what he saves us to. We are made for Jesus. We're made for him. And we, think about the, and we think about what's there to look forward to in heaven. You know, the streets of gold. There's reunions with loved ones. 
There's sinless living to look forward to in heaven. Just think about that for a minute, sinless living. That would be a wonderful thing to live with. Think about, think about all the consequences of your actions or poor decisions. You don't want to worry about that anymore in heaven. You don't want to worry about that anymore. You know, it's sinless living. And, but you know something? It might thrill us at first, all of that. But it's only Jesus that truly satisfies us for eternity. You see, we need Jesus to truly satisfy us for eternity. You know, these wonderful things about heaven are only wonderful because Jesus is there with us with eternity. That's the only one. Without Jesus, yeah, it might be lovely at first, but only Jesus truly satisfies our soul for eternity. Jesus is at the centre of life and he will be forever. If there is no living Christ, there is no living satisfaction. If there's no living Christ, there is no living satisfaction. Sometimes I look around the world. I look around my... Well, actually, I don't have to look far. I don't have to look at my neighbours. I don't have to look at my neighbours, not only in this, in this church where, where, where the office is, but my neighbours in Kingscliff where I live there. I look around the neighbours here and the neighbours at Kingscliff. I have a look around and... You can see enjoyment in their lives. And why wouldn't you enjoy this place? It's beautiful. You know, you've got the beach right there. You've got a nice, slow, laid-back way of living. You do. You've got nice weather. We're able to rug up in winter, like my friends do down in Canberra. We haven't got to do any of that. It's wonderful. And you can see why they're happy. You know, we've got, they're probably off to go fishing, maybe go for a surf. You know, it's lovely. And I can see that in, the, in, their, in their eyes. They're enjoying the benefits of life. But you see, that comes because we have the presence of God on this earth. You take away the presence of God on this earth, and very quickly, I think the smiles of their face will be wiped. I think it will. And it disappoints me, it saddens me, when I, look, when I have a look, because I think they, they, they have the benefits but they don't thank the Creator. They don't thank the Creator. They can see the benefits of the Creator right there, but they don't thank the Creator. Uh, they don't. And, 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 and you know, if I was Jesus or if I was God, I'd have every right to think, fine, oh, you, you don't appreciate me? That's it, I'm turning off the lights, uh, you might think. Seriously, I, I would, I would totally, if I was God, I would totally be like that. I would be. They won't thank me. Well, fine. I'll switch this off. Let's see how they enjoy it. <laughs> I'll say. But he's not like that. You see, he's a God of grace. He gives us more than our sins deserve. And it's only the presence of the Lord on this earth that gives us satisfaction. Think about it as the church for a minute. We are the presence of God on this earth. There'll come a time where we too will be raptured, and then that'll be it. We are the last hope on this earth because we carry the presence of God in our hearts. You take away the church and the presence of God is gone from this world. Just think about that for a minute. We are the last place where people can go to receive the presence of God. Without us, that's it. They're all Satan's. They are Satan's for eternity. Just think about that for a minute. You know, just think about you know, and what a responsibility that is at the same time. What a privilege that is too to be chosen as believers to carry uh, this hope on this earth. Because he is alive. He is alive. He is alive indeed inside of us. And he is alive for eternity. And as Christians on this earth, we, are, we have the privilege of carrying this living hope. To indeed to know and to enjoy. Amen. If you are able, would you mind just standing as we pray? Let's just stand as we pray, uh, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, we're thankful, Lord, for this almighty privilege, uh, Lord, to carry uh, the presence of God on this earth. And Lord Jesus Christ, help us, Lord, to be people of hope, Lord, to carry this wonderful truth, the beautiful story of the resurrection, 
the wonderful story of Christ that died for us and for all of us. Help us to carry it, to carry it, Lord. Help us, Lord, to give it the justice it deserves. Help us, Lord, to be filled with your spirit, Lord, that pours out from heaven's throne. May, us, may we be people of the word, carriers of grace, and carriers of hope. And just while we've got our eyes closed while we stand, uh, while we're standing here. Let's just let's just pray, Lord, for anyone that might that might, you know, let's just think of our friends, let's think of our families, uh, Lord. I know all of us have probably got friends, we've all got families. Let's just surrender them to the Lord now and to know that they too will be saved. They too will come to know Christ. Just like that song says, I speak the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus for my family. And I, and I don't know where you stand with God, where you might stand with God. And just know that he invites you into Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you're at with God. I know many of us are at different, are, are at different places in the journey. But if, you, but if you're someone searching, please make yourself known to myself or Keith or one of us. We would love to keep encouraging you on that journey. We're going to have one more song of praise. So that is the word for today on this glorious Easter Sunday. Remember, Christ died. God in his humility, made a way for us to come to him. That's what today is all about. If that's you, if you're searching for God, if you're searching for your own resurrection story, would you pray with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you, that you sent your son to die for me on the cross, to come back to life on Sunday, Lord, for, to give me life, Lord. I thank you for the sacrifice that you made. I pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, you will come into my life, that you'll make yourself new to me in more powerful ways. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, we believe you just got bored again. Make sure you get yourself connected into a Bible-based church. For the rest of you, I pray that you have a wonderful Easter weekend. Remember, he is risen.